scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you.
Father, in this service, open my eyes and give me an encounter tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Open my eyes. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you first to God, second to the world. I commend you first to God then second to the world I commend you I transfer responsibility for the results in your life first to God like you transfer a small child and say from now take care of him and God is saying Paul is speaking and say I commend you first to God to, to the world it says that that word is able hmm, is able does not outsource power from any other place in itself it is able to build you up number one number two it says it is able to give the word can give things to men it is able to build you up then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it says, I commend you first to God. Then I commend you to the word. It says that that word is able to build you. To build you means to translate you. To take you to a dimension higher than your prior experience. And then as a reward for staying, it says it will give you an inheritance. Something provable something demonstrable that everyone will know that this one would only have come if a man met God and met his word lift your voice in one minute and say Lord I have come I have come to encounter God and encounter the word I trust in the ability of the word to build me it is able to build Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Please be seated. One of the things that I pray will continue to happen to us is that God by his spirit will continue to grant us the comprehension of the value of the word of God in the life of a believer. It's not enough to just believe that the word of God is God's word. You must believe that the word of God contains within itself an ability and that the word of God is able to make men if received. It says he came to his own and his own received him not. Then it says but as many as received him. Anything received can be rejected. Is that true? As many as received him, even to them that believed on his name, the Bible says he gave them power to become. Power to become. Nobody is made by default. My brothers and my sisters, listen. Saul does not become Paul just by default. There is a system in the kingdom that makes men. There's nothing wrong with the way you come. Except that if you are willing to engage in the systems of the kingdom, then there is a guarantee that the word of God, God who is the owner of the word, and the word of God commended to you. You know, many times we talk about the word of God, the power of the word, but the truth is that we have not educated people enough to see the value in the word of God. 
Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says in John chapter 1, the gospel of John chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning, listen, was the word. And it says the word was with God. Then it says the word was God. It says that he was with God in the beginning. Now here's the part. It says to him all things. How many things? Now when the Bible tells you something made everything, you should respect it. Are we together now? Yes. That all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of god that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the Bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth, it means that he's giving you access. It's a scepter of dominion. That with this word, when he grants it unto you, then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Now, truthfully speaking, it may take a while, you see, because God is not a magician. It's a system. That means your participation is required. But that line upon line. My brothers and my sisters, let me give you a guarantee. And I tell you this in the name of the Lord. If you listen to the things that I teach you. And you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive. There is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny. It's a matter of time. Forget about the things you do not see and focus on what God is giving you. What God is giving you is greater than any car you can buy. Trust me. You must have something greater than material things to get material things. You can't have something less than material things and then have these things. God is If all God gives you now is a car and a house and money, he cheated you. He will give you something that will compel the Gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising. Are we together now? There is nothing in the Bible that is a true blessing that is physical. Listen carefully. There is nothing in the Bible that is given physical, like you give someone something physical. You may call it a blessing, but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately Please pay attention, especially for those outside. Unfortunately, men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late. The system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out. So if all you are looking for is just result, you may, be, you may miss a major part of the dealings of God. God is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting. And then the devil will use manipulate because you see, let me tell you this. The domain of the senses is where Satan dwells. He is the master of the sense realm. He knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses, the sensory perceptions that come from his environment. So he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what God is doing in your life. If it is true you are receiving favor, where is it? And you stand and say, boy, it's true. Oh, Kai, God, you serve. I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his gari. Are we together now? And the devil cheats you 
because he's a master of the sense realm but do you not know the bible says while we look not at the things which are seen the things which are seen you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of god's word not our experiences your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that god is faithful so if you depend on your experiences you will see gaps in supposed gaps in the faithfulness of god you will see obvious things god did not do supposedly so you take your mind your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting god's integrity you use the word of god and say lord my life may not have a b and c yet but i know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail and not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity you have cheated satan when you get to that level because satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life where is the money if you say god is faithful where is the anointing you are a man of god and you claim god has raised you to be a prophet to the nations in one year nobody invited you for anything is it really true that the hand of god is at work in you where are the gentiles that should come to your light at first you will claim you have faith but the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you and he said am i called or what if it's a demonic attack let me know and repent and just find somewhere but i mean am i called and god says just listen to me but if you continue staying my brothers and my sisters one day it will do you like a dream you will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say lord what is this and then men will say like they always say he came out of nowhere and god will say keep quiet nobody comes out of nowhere he says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them if if you give yourself halfway hoping so that if it fails at least you can put your leg somewhere it, it doesn't work like that let me tell you you throw yourself in this thing and say if i perish i perish this this scientific christianity i know god is faithful but let me patch him with an uncle so one leg is here one leg so that whatever happens your ego is not strong and that very ego is why you may never see the power of god because you have not proven to god that you have thrown all to him and you just come and say god if you don't help me i don't have an option god says this is what i like now that you have stepped aside let me show you that i'm a great god are we blessed tonight i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you you know most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently even pastors most men of god don't know why they hold weekly fellowships others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for for the week or the month because every time people gather they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before god empty-handed so they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church it may not be entirely true the regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of God. It's one of the ways that the church is built. One of the ways that the church matures. Because every time we gather together, among the many things that happen, number one, there is an opportunity for an encounter with the Spirit of God. That's entirely spiritual. Are we together now? And then number two, an opportunity to learn the ways of God. To learn the ways of God. Life will not excuse you for what you do not know. 
life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category i'm passionate about what i do not know i'm passionate about the danger i may submit myself to not knowing what i should know and so my heart is always panting to find out lord thank you for what you have shown me but what else do i not know if you do not know look at me for instance if i'm standing at the edge of this stage and i do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down i'm just shifting innocently the depression will not think that just because i'm not aware it will not touch me i will fall and it can kill me is that true so when someone tells you hey hold on when you get here stand that knowledge has delivered you is that true so we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for god to expose us to the ways of god and then it is an opportunity to experience the power of god in the midst of his people is 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 not going to be possible to present a god that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him it's one thing to know that the possibilities of god are encapsulated in this bible but it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it you don't need to experience everything but that god does something in your life that you can now say kai god now i know i know so the next time you are talking to someone and says which god you say no forget about the apostle look at my life i'm now a testimony an epistle that god is able to do this and that hallelujah there is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word the spirit of distraction you can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking you are learning no the bible says that the sower sows the word right there satan is in the midst of of, of god's people roaming around and looking for careless hearts and he comes by himself and takes the word so that you are ever learning oh this topic ah i know it i remember genesis chapter this verse this but there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. so please let's challenge ourselves and say lord it is true that i don't serve you just for results but lord i'm determined I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life if you see God's hand in one two three areas and remaining four five six you are encouraged but where you get zero over six of God's hand is not enough testimony are we together it is the Word of God that builds it is the Word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom like a domain and the word of god allocates you come darling and says you stand here come my dear stand here come this is your place of dominion you have believed in me enough the word of god gives you your allocation in life so this person starts somewhere and god says there is a seat i have given you in the prophetic and the word of god gives you that position you stay there and you know it's an office backed up by god himself no man will be able to stand against you this one was apportioned by the spirit as a testimony not of your desire for ministry listen as a testimony of your staying power with god for as a prince you have power with god you can roam around and say god has called me into business life drives you out you come again and say god called me into family and you roam around life and there is no space for you he dug a well they came and covered it they say it's not your space he dug another well they covered it when he dug the first one they gave him space and he called it rehoboth he said god has given me my own space you need to have your own place in life dominion is territorial until you find your jurisdiction of dominion you cannot begin to walk in it you will hate people you will be angry you will quarrel people you will hate others that god is blessing in their area of dominion 
it is the word of God that allocates. While the word of God is being taught, mystery after mystery, principle after principle, the spirit of God is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance. And so this lady hears that God is distributing this and then the call of God upon her life locates her in the place of the call. And this one hears that God is lifting people in the area of business and God keeps her there. And by the time these people have been around God for a long time, you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension. This roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes, you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are working in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know. God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Won't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience. And you will start saying the rest are wrong. Whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you get to the final destination. Please, place value on the word of God. Place value on the, not just the reading of the word. You have been reading it. Place value on its ability to give you something in life. Look, let me tell you this. If I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that they can they can share the um, what they call it get the death benefit and share the money listen to what I'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever 
but when God gives you a spiritual inheritance no man no tribe they may hate you but my brothers and my sisters when a key is given to you the key is given in a way and a manner that God will cause nations to pass through that door it's impossible to ignore you these are the truths I have found there is rest when you find this all this fear up and down how will my future be will i be great will i eat will my children eat those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of god's training there are many questions we ask now there are questions because we are jumping classes if you stay with god there are some questions you will not need to ask believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student the responsibility of the spirit of god no there there you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with him and you're saying lord guide me curriculum after curriculum no rushing no comparison i stay with you five years others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, i used to know pastor femi unfortunately you used to know him that him has died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already God bless you. Bless you guys. Thank you. We must have passion for the word of God. I will touch a bit on something that I thought I would have the allowance to preach this year. In fact, when the Lord put this in my heart, I said, oh Lord, but I've cried to you again and again to allow me to preach this. And... Um, I honestly thought we'll be able to have the series um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it um, it's very powerful very powerful God thank you thank you There are things when you find in this kingdom please listen to me there are things when you find in this kingdom god hell and men will know you found something there are things when you find only god will know you found it there are things when you find only men will know but there are things when you find god men hell will know but by his grace you have been given something and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become So tonight, I will just do an introduction of it, true riches. Just an introduction. It's not part one. We have a series next. We'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year. But, and, and don't think I'm talking about money at all. Settle down and listen and let God bless you. Because when we hear riches, the first thing we think about because of the way i don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way you know once people just hear riches a lot of people are very happy this is a very spiritual teaching 
In fact, riches is really spiritual. Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. Read with me, believers. One, two, read. Ah, that's not you. Be delivered from... Let's read one more time. One, two, read. Uh Uh-huh. Hold on. It's a question. Who will commit to you? So this one is not an achievement. People commit it to you. Listen. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Unfaithful mammon. The word unfaithful suggests instability. Is that true? Something that is not reliable. And it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? When I saw this scripture, it blessed and changed my life. Who will commit to your trust? True riches. There's something in this kingdom called true riches. And the Bible says that the basis for access to it among other things is faithfulness listen very carefully and then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the bible calls true riches is a commitment meaning that god observes and sees your faithfulness listen carefully he can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing but whilst you're doing it he's observing you and that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test and like a report card god calls you and says i give you something called true riches and he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you that means aside from god who else has that access He's not just trying to tell you. He's saying who else? Who else can commit to you? This mystery that we call true riches. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 2 to 8. Listen very carefully. And you'll understand something powerful tonight. Paul is speaking now. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word verse 3 how that by revelation listen he made known unto me what the mystery by revelation he made known I didn't search it out he brought it and gave it to me as I wrote afore in few words, we are reading to verse 8, verse 4. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Eight. (laughs) Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace so is a grace is this grace given what is the grace that i should preach among the gentiles help me the unsearchable riches not just the gospel that i should preach the unsearchable unfathomable riches look at the description that is used there he didn't say that i should preach the gospel that i should preach they they are mysteries the bible says there is a grace that this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the bible calls the unsearchable 
riches of Christ. These are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church. And he told them, he says, he was quoting some, some eight, you know that you have put all things under his feet and all of that and he says but we do not yet see all things the unsearchable riches of christ what is it if i ask you define for me because this is in the bible this is the pauline epistle what is the unsearchable riches of christ money business naira and kobo May God open your eyes. This is an introduction tonight. But may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That man, there is a grace that God by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it. It's not just by fasting and praying. It's not just by reading a book. God comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is what the Bible calls true riches. What is it? That's why Paul, Paul was, remember Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. So Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy. That man was very diligent in the spirit. And when it came to this description, Paul was even broken. Seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life, he acknowledged that unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, was this grace given. That I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere. When Jesus was, I was not even part of the 70. And God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus. A donkey falls down. He knocks me and calls me and says, I want to give you. I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian the dispenser that's why he started by saying look when my teachings are hard don't criticize me there is a grace i received it god came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing and he calls the name the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. That means profitless knowledge, both for me and for the saints. That God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life. It's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the Lord opened me up to this I was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and God is my witness and I tell you this I'm a, I'm a student I'm not ashamed when I learn things from people and I build you know I'm not I'm not somebody who is, 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 is arrogant to say all this and that I, I'm a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way I look at you is the same way God was opening me up to the world. See this. This is the key. The mystery that connects to this. And many times when I listen to people, fathers of faith, and I hear them teach, I say, God, this is what you were telling me. I say, because I'm the one who told them to. 
not everything in your life will come by studies i'm not teaching you to be lazy but we're teaching we're teaching this is this is this is a school of the spirit not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture my brothers and my sisters there are different ways god imparts knowledge to us one of it is through the stillness of your spirit be still and know that i am god and one of it is access revelation spiritual illumination god just comes to you and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth these spiritual blessings these unsearchable riches what you call true riches they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of God's life here and now. The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage. There has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge, where we sustain an advantage. It is not, it is not something hidden that life is harsh. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. It is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration. Men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm. From tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations, etc., etc. Everything looks like it's against you. You only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage. Are we together now? Yes. Um, come, come doctor. If you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here, he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and I'm standing here and someone is holding me. These things are my advantage. Is that true? Now, even if he's stronger than me, if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors, you see that? I will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability. I have trusted systems that have provided an advantage and the bible tells us that these unsearchable riches they were designed by god as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign so he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification it is ultimately god that gives us victory my brothers and my sisters but the victory is broken into systems so you can know that god has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided and you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage are we together now bless you thank you so true riches i define are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and to manifest the reality of god's life here and now we're just doing an introduction romans chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace everybody say the abundance of grace the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness it says they shall reign in life they shall reign in life they shall reign in life 
this is what validates the fact that we are kings revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed them should be it's a mistake there because these are the four and twenty elders redemption was not for them so they are speaking over the saints so the word us there is a mistake in translation redeem them to god by thy blood out of every kindred listen now every tongue every people every nation verse 10 and has made us now them you understand and has made us unto our god what kings and priests and the bible says and we shall reign where on earth so god's dominion agenda is real he wants us to reign he wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the christ now i hope you understand let's let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities that jesus christ came and said i am the way the truth and the life then he says that no man cometh to the father except by me is that true so jesus is the door to the kingdom he is the only not even just many he is the only valid access point into the life of the spirit you can manipulate through all the routes into a life of spiritism but if you want to access the kingdom life jesus is the authorized channel not even an angel are we together now and then the bible lets us know that the 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 system that makes for salvation romans chapter 8 when you, 10 when you read from verse 8 to 10 you know the bible says that you confess with your heart the lord jesus you believe you will mouth the lord jesus you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead then you are saved the moment you get born again watch this what does it mean to be saved as it were to receive new life very simple the bible says that there is a translation but much more than a translation the bible lets us know that this divine life the life we call zoe known by men as eternal life but it's more than eternal life it is god's life a quality not the kind the very life of god are we together now the bible says by the ministry of the holy spirit that that life is supplanted we're refreshing ourselves now upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to christ now becomes one spirit is a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt all of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together the condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt are you seeing that now yes another example i've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration this is the mystery of marriage the mystery by which two people become one right so a separate entity called a man another separate entity called a woman by covenant they become one one not physically but one in the spirit recognized by god himself are we together now that's why the bible says let no man do asunder it put asunder is a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit are you getting what i'm saying now so man receives of that life so way the spirit of god and then among the many things that are that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened still by the ministry of the holy spirit and then the operation of the word the logos and the operation of the spirit of god begin in your life you begin to learn the ways of god and then the word of god begins to wash you huh? like you wash a cloth begins to purify your conscience and then your mind is educated again the light is driving out that darkness and gradually gradually by all those exercises conformity and transformation not impartation yet conformity and transformation these things will remain for a very long time in your life and then you begin to see the grace speaking are we together now because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge so it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil 
there are things that are correct so god will not reset your mind and then he will do that only with your permission so it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years that's how slow you wanted god to take you are we together now so you find out that after 10 years the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with god is not showing in your life god is limited by your yieldedness limited by your alignment this is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres and then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace people who by his predeterminate counsel he has called into certain offices and dimensions usually god will do an unusual work in them are we together now a work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness that's why they can't take credit for it it was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide so they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is the only thing they have to do is correct their errors not pray for new visions they have been seeing it since it's just that they have been interpreting nonsense so what they are repenting of is not it's not it's not a hazy vision there are people who even they got born again and there and then they started seeing visions there and then others came from priesthood a wrong key forced the door to, you, you understand what i mean a wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened hmm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access uh, believers are you learning something yes to you it looks like you are just seeing visions no there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway and there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware for being granted access to see things in the spirit and you are routing by a wrong door you will not know because it's subtle after 10 years you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil are we together now so when you get born again it's true that your eyes were open with the charm you will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you but the realm of the spirit is already open to you it's true systems of advantage that believers can access and god can grant them grace maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least we'll still do them next year the unsearchable riches these are the things that when i look at in my life sometimes i just get down my knees and i say god thank you thank you you don't owe me anything you have been faithful i found them and they are very powerful can i give you the first one the first of these true riches this mystery is called the goodness of God the goodness of God what is this you will know now that it is that grace that is released on you if this grace is not present you cannot have conscience it is the goodness of God that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men not mercy mercy has its place the goodness everything i'm telling you i'll show you from the bible you will now see why god told moses it is my goodness i will allow you to see my goodness the goodness of god allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance but the goodness of god also allows for continual repentance the word repent is not for sinners i've told you this it's not a word that is just left for sinners it's a kingdom expression a system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of god's glory it's called repentance let's look at a very serious scripture romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 just write it down and let's read we're bible students romans 2 one to four ready i will tell you where to join me in the reading 
Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. Listen now carefully. He's talking about judgment. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest does the same things too. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Three. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Now look at verse 4. Read with me, please. Or despised thou the what? Riches. Hold on. Stop. Let's not rush. Despised thou the... Remember, we're talking of true riches. We're fishing them out now. That there is something called the riches of his goodness. What does it do? And forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. If you ever repent, it is the goodness of God that came to you. It's not something you did by your strength to say, oh, I think, I... no, the, the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that God has been good to you. This is the Bible. It says it is one of the two riches given to the saints, the riches of God's goodness. Hmm. Are we still together tonight? Did you know that the riches of God or the goodness of God is one of the true riches of the kingdom? Many people say, ah, oh God, when the Bible says, surely goodness, we quote it every time, surely goodness and mercy, as if we are singing a special number. This is a very deep mystery. If the goodness of God does not go with you, I will tell you, I will show you people from the Bible, the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches. You will see what happens. When God looks at people, Jesus looks and says, you are poor in spirit, that they are bankrupt. He knew what he was saying. They had food in their houses, but there were certain attributes of the, the advantage of God given to the saints. It's not there in their life. Let me show you. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. This is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of God's goodness. Read with me. One, two, read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Uh-huh. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Do you know what this means? That means you have lost the ability to recognize. This is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman, bring out a child and kill the person. And by the next day, he's moving and smiling. Let me tell you what that person needs is not revival. What that person needs is not even mercy. What that person needs is the goodness. One of the two riches sent like an errand. Once the goodness of God meets that person, he breaks down immediately. True riches. The unsearchable riches of Christ. So God looks at men and sends his goodness to them. And all of a sudden, you see men translating from level to level. And they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it. Keep that scripture again, please. Romans 2 and verse 4. The riches of his goodness. Not just his goodness, the riches, the wealth. You see that a man who had this was David. David knew the goodness of God. That's why he became a man after God's heart. Lucifer didn't have this. If Luc no, no demon has this. Lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of God. So repentance is in it. It's not that he doesn't want to do it. Has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds? Why didn't he say, God, I've watched this thing for a long time. Let's talk. You are my creator. No. It is the goodness of God that allows men to ever see the need for repentance. Hmm. Evangelists pray for this. If you are going for crusades, don't just pray for signs. Oh God, let them know I was called. <clears throat> pray intelligently. Lord, let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness 
and you will watch the wonder this is what happens in redemption camp when papa ia debo preaches a simple message and says i will count one to five one and you see people run they don't even know what is bringing them out this is what the generals had charles g finney are we together now they had this in in very abundant measures they understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of god when we say the goodness of god we just mean his ability to be benevolent it's more than that the primary assignment of the goodness of god is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory the bible calls it his goodness second peter chapter 3 and verse 9 is somebody learning something tonight he says who shall commit to you if god opens your eyes and you see it and engage it then your life will change the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us what not willing that any man perish but that all should come to repentance this is god's willingness so he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going their lives can never reflect god and then his goodness some of you it was the goodness of god that brought you here to koinonia not invitation it was the goodness of god that gave you access to the teachings because god designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of god come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of christ hmm. let's try another so the goodness of god is an advantage in my life an advantage an advantage what is the advantage causing me to consistently realign so that i get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun and people say ah, ah what happened and you say god has been good to me now the carnal man would think what you are saying is god gave me favor you understand what i'm saying or god made a helper or like our dear sister shared god made somebody to give me miracle a lot that's true but what really happened was that he caused you to re to align so that his glory can better find expression in your life the riches of his goodness the next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house the key is not counseling the key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of god i i got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting god to help them to start a life and the the young boy and his friend true story they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their whatever it is and this one would drive and park and give this one to drive and park they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it will help them start life and the young boy it was his turn he was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck it was a miracle that the boy survived and the family said i'm not hearing anything just get my car and bring for me that was how they had to look for I, these are people like counsel they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out 
And yet you see the boys moving around. And I was just looking at him and he was looking around. No remorse. Look at armed robbers that kill people in the night. And by the next morning, they pass the same house they rob. And you see them smiling. During crisis, the people that kill people, do they die suddenly? They are alive. They pass a house that they know I'm the reason for the obituary in this house. And then they pass and laugh. They have not encountered the goodness of God. Let me tell you, it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of God. They are the people we call heartless, conscienceless, like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of Nigerians. This is what they need. Are we together now? Number two. Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says, get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. It's, they are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, walking that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle is only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee. Love her. And she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting. See it now again. Get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her. And she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is? Causing men to discern, acknowledge, and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. 
I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living. Will make your life meaningful by every standard. Proverbs chapter 8. Doth not wisdom cry. Look at how merciful God is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking. The Bible says wisdom is crying. Crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her. It says an understanding. Are you seeing them together? Wisdom is crying. Understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standed in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She cried at the gates. The place of exchange. Where men enter and go out, wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city, at the coming it at the doors. Four. Unto you, O men, I call. Wisdom is speaking. And my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple. Simple there does not mean humble. Simple means unwise. Meaning there is, there is no fortitude for comprehension. It says understand wisdom. And ye fools be of an understanding heart. Hear for I will speak excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. Seven. For my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Eight. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. Hold on. If I give you wisdom and I give you silver, wisdom says, please don't be foolish to choose silver. Leave silver fast and come to me. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. Two things the Bible says are better than rubies. One wisdom to a virtuous woman. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh -huh. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions i hope we have the grace to continue the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do i hate counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength please read by the spirit this is what I want you to do. Now, wisdom is giving you a manifesto. Like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out. And he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him. And he's saying, by me, kings reign. If you see any king reigning on earth, this is what enthroned him. Wisdom. You see any king reigning in business, in ministry. It's not just God. Wisdom. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. 16. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Who will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit substance there is not money substance there is results tangibility i will fill their treasures go ahead 
the Lord possessed me. So this is how creation happened. Through wisdom a house is built. Wisdom is saying the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. Next verse. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Three more verses or two. Then I was by him. Ah. As one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight. Rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. Last verse. Now therefore unto me, O ye children. Hearken to me, O ye children. For blessed are they that keep my ways. Wisdom. One of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even God used me for his results. That means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom. Not the knowledge of it. Not the comprehension of it. The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to use the word to produce supernatural results. That's wisdom. My brothers and my sisters, I can show you scriptures upon scripture. We are doing an introduction today supernatural wisdom that happened to men they rose on account of that wisdom let's look at one scripture first kings chapter 3 solomon god's portrait of wisdom you see that every once and again these men obtain one or more of these attributes and that's what they used to do business in the earth realm and they, they dumbfounded the wisdom of men. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. We are reading to verse 13 from verse 9. Solomon is praying now. God is asking him, what should I do? And he says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. To judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. To 13. And God said to him, Because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself, what? Long life. Neither hast thou asked, here it is again, unfaithful mammon, riches for thyself. Nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies, but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Let's see what God gave him. I have given, given, given. I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee. I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings you see that every time kings were there wisdom understanding 
go to chapter 4 from verse 29 go to chapter 4 and verse 29 chapter 4 first kings and verse 29 read with me please one to read and god gave go ahead solomon wisdom aha uh -huh, and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sun that is on the seashore the manifesto the attributes of all this spiritual blessing next verse and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt uh-huh for he was wiser than all men than ethan the ezrahite than heman than Kalkol, than dada all these guys are champions of wisdom they were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom and his fame was in all nations round about 32 for he spake three thousand proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five worship team you see how songs come an encounter with the spirit of wisdom believe me one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we are still singing it there were songs that were written last month we are tired of it it tells you the dimension it's not that there, there's something wrong with the song the dimension from which the song came if it is that which is of the earth is earthy that which is of heaven is heavenly 33 and he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high soap that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when god wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why i'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that God gives you, even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it. Are we together now? But where shall wisdom be found? Remember I asked us a question. He said, get wisdom. And I said, where? So Job now, the man of wisdom, wisest, richest, Job, is having a conversation where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding have you seen that they always go together next verse man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living ah, where is the land of the living that means it's not found here it's not a commodity that is affordable in any market let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth Mm -mm. it cannot be found the earth does not have the capacity to produce this it can produce sophia human wisdom that is a derivative of trial and error and science but not the wisdom that comes from above the depth said it is not in me the sea said 
it is not with me that means all these things go back all these things are storage devices on earth they hide things the depth there are things that the depth keeps and those who know it can say bring it out that's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say oh earth he said let the people praise thee this earth is not barren let the people praise thee this earth will start yielding meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth no wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth the earth hides fruitfulness water hides abundance you read your bible everything the birds of the air and everything came out of water and so they said the depth said it is not with me the sea said it is not with me next verse it cannot be gotten for gold neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof uh-huh it cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, nor with the precious onyx nor the sapphire next verse the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls for the price of wisdom is above rubies the topaz of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold 20 whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame hmm. look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics good understanding god understanded the way thereof that's the secret only god understands the way and he knoweth the place thereof hmm. no just just stop at 23 god understanded the way that means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom who gave him that's why i told you it is it is a grace this is not something you walk education cannot give it no when men possess this dimension of wisdom god gave it to men is one of the unsearchable riches of christ solomon possessed it and he did wonders ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery and you can see a very young frail person but carrying something ancient that was with god at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of god that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see sheba and her bounties come to you that the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord believe me satan has deceived us to chase after things god never designed that we chase after things these are the commanders of dominion when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you the bible says she shall bring thee in other words i can find wisdom from a small room and wisdom says follow me like peter following an angel i step into the place of great men and i say what am i doing here and wisdom says this is where i live whoever possesses me will live with me and you will eat the bread of kings because wisdom brought you there 
but how many people desire the wisdom of God so many people will tell you this is an interruption there are many men of God that will not focus listen many young Nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of God just go all these pastors you are just lucky you are anointed you are anointed that's all let me hustle my life no sir no sir except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep when god gives you wisdom your eyes will see things and it will surprise you what god will make out of your life no man's anger and change what the wisdom of God does in your life. Let me tell you this. Learn this early in life. Whether people believe in you or not, it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the Spirit working in your life. If you ever look at a man holding this unsearchable riches of Christ, your anger is just beginning. You will be angry till you die. It will not do anything because death is the last enemy to be destroyed so if death testifies that i've hands up then you two hands up quickly that is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in revelation one of the four horse riders and it gives up and says no this one is above my power and above my dimension wisdom knowledge Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear listen access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit sayeth the spirit sayeth the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times are we together now some shall depart from the faith he says giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons in the the spirit speaketh expressly that means one of the greatest you are at a point of advantage the hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office it is a grace that god washes your ear with high iso so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there would be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto god and say lord as i'm starting ministry give me the ear that hears let me tell you this listen i have studied the church in nigeria for many years i have studied the church in africa I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so I am amazed at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight not sin not disobedience but that the Spirit of God is going because the anointing goes where the Spirit is going wherever the voice of God is that's where his power is so if god's voice and power is going left and you are going right even if it's sincerely so that's the end of it my brothers and my sisters let me tell you your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear 
you will appreciate this in years to come the higher you rise in ministry the more desperate you must cry moses said don't send us from here moses was not a fool with a rod in his hand thy rod and thy staff he said no way if you will not i need to know you are there just because god said move left yesterday does not mean he will say move left today you must hear him part time and there is a grace I have studied this subject of hearing God properly. I can tell you, hearing God, even prophets have problem with hearing God. Let me tell you something about hearing God. The gift of prophecy, the hearing that comes to prophesy, is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction. You can walk in accuracy. I can look at your name, call your number, call everything. And you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of God. Most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies. The hearing ear. I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and by God's grace I've met very powerful and accurate prophets. And you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for God to speak on matters in their lives. And yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. Listen, and I will hear what he will say unto me. Read your Bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives. Although their gifts and their graces were still there. When I learned this, I learned this mystery from Dr. D.K. Olukoya. I was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and i said what is the meaning of that and you see if god helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces you must be careful because most times we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift that prophetic operation is at work it necessarily means you yourself are accurate it's not true have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what I'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling one of the unsearchable riches of Christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the Spirit. You stand and watch and say, I've heard him. God is saying, go left. And everybody is saying, go right. Use common sense. You know you heard God. When you move left, after five years, people look at you. I have seen a bit of what hearing God can do. This ministry today, my brothers and my sisters, is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches, you won't go down. 
I'm not one person who comes all the time and say, God said, God said. I'm very careful. Now we have, especially we young people, we have abused God said. Anybody just comes and says, God said. Just because you felt like God said. No. Or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking. There are tongues of men. There are tongues of angels. There is the voice of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. You must learn it. There are times when I hear God speak, everyone around me knows God has said, the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. If it is God that you hear, the voice of God will always come with the spirit of faith. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. It's impossible to hear God and remain and sit down there. No. Here and there you can think you had God and he said go to Kano. You can say I know I had Kano but tomorrow you just turn. But you know God is very faithful. He will allow you. He knows we are students in the school of the spirit. Just keep playing around. But the day his majestic voice lands on your life there is no power that can stop you. Let me tell you God is not always speaking. God speaks but he's not always speaking. A lot of people keep saying God is always speaking. No sir. Are you always talking? At least you were created in his image. No. In the fifth day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. I've had occasions where God has spoken to me. And you have seen it. Even some of the messages. There are messages here that God gave me the titles. And I was, I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because God said it. I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying. And then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing. Let's be careful with this God said. Let's not reduce God to become a man. Now it doesn't mean that you can hear things. There is the knowing of the spirit. There is the witness of the spirit. They all look like voices. You have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings. They are very different. Just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, the voice is not the only way to speak. Light is a way of communicating. Love is a language. It can speak. So I can hear. That's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are, stay for verification. When God spoke about Koinonia to start three days, we had set up the departments. God has granted us grace. I remember, if you remember that time, I was telling you God told me this and that and that. People will come from nations and people, this is what God said. I remember saying it that time. As at the time I said it, I said I saw CGC. This is not what I saw. I saw it broken, expanded. What is this that I'm seeing? I saw people standing, parking, filling the roads. And you know, like, as usual, every time you say God said, you need grace yourself to believe it. Because there are times that you just sit and say, okay, now I'm calm. It's like you, you smoked, uh, 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 what they call this thing. And so you went high and... To you, you can even say, look at the nonsense that I said. And you listen to your own message and say, hey, it's not exactly God. And God said, what are you saying? I'm the one speaking. We were preparing to start packaging our messages. I was thanking God and trusting and blessing him for the anointing he had given me. And just saying, oh God, thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us. And here comes the voice of God. No. In this season, you are not going to sell your messages. Facebook, that time, it was, I mean, it was even the first head of media's Facebook page. And he said, just carry your messages and put them on MP3. Put them on Facebook. Don't put the videos, just the audios. And I will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth. That's it. My brothers and my sisters, when God says sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life there are things god has said 
Listen to me. There are things God has said. When God talks, notice that God doesn't care what you are seeing. He tells you what you will do. And he will do it. So I stand upon my watch. I'm not in a hurry to move. God, what are you saying in this season? That's the reason why we have workers retreats. That's why we have our own retreats. A few weeks now, I'm going to start my end of year retreat. I'm telling you, you don't know how excited I am at that time. Because many of you have gone. No disturbances. I just shut my phone. And sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear God. Because there is, as it were, many voices, many sounds. And none of them is without significance. The voice of house rent can interrupt what God is saying. This spiritual haziness has a science. The encumbrances of life can push you. Your child's school fees, your life. And God is saying, fast for three days. I say, is it God? Is it a demon? Is it? Yes, there are times that you check against the word of God. But let me tell you, there are times only God will help you. Because even you, you don't know whether this is God again. Most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm. That's why they don't understand. Years ago, I've shared with you the story. I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria. And I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money. I mean, why sit here till we die? Remember the four lepers. At least I should do one. I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home. And I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith. And I did. And I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna. And a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me, enter. Public transport, oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done. When you turn back on hindsight, you say, it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car. I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that. Until we pass Jaji, I knew there was no hope. You know, if it's 10 naira you don't have or 20 naira, you can beg. But I mean, when, when you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare, and then they now said, Everybody bring your money, and people were bringing them. But my God is my witness, my heart was at peace this is what happens when it's god that is speaking you leave him to be responsible for the word i just obeyed and that was how someone brought out paid my transport fare i dropped at fly over here entered the bus happy because i felt at least whatever it is this one i'll pay and someone knew me in the car and paid i stopped in front of north gate with the same money i was with there it was a message God was saying, look, I am God by myself. I can do it anyhow. There are times I can send a helper to give you money. There are times I say the helper is in the car. Enter and meet him there. It doesn't matter where the helper is. Believe God enough to go. There are times he parts the waters. There are times he says, walk on it. Let it just be that he sees him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You will need this for ministry. When God sent us to go for our crusade, we got up and moved like madmen. What you see today, my brothers and my sisters, is a product of the voice of God. You need the grace to hear God, not grace for prophecy. Lord, let me hear you. you, you, you look, you can pray and say, God, search my frail person. What is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me? Help me in that area. There are some of you that your hearing, you have not trained your hearing. If, you, if God speaks through your ears, you will not hear. And so you are going to say, Lord, give me a kind of dream that I will wake up and find myself standing. I will know that this one was not a dream. 
Let me tell you if your heart is right, God will give you. There are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind. Mind? How many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams? You know this one is not my mind. This is the voice of God. Unsearchable riches. The hearing ear. The seeing eye. One time, the storm was boisterous. I think it was Peter or Paul. And it was very obvious they were going to capsize. And all of a sudden, the hearing ear and the seeing eye. An angel appears to him and speaks to him and says, Don't worry, there shall be no loss. And he calmed the people down and said, Hey, relax. An angel has appeared to me and he has said to me that there shall be no loss. And the Bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived at an island called Melita. When you hear God, you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing. And people are saying, excuse me sir, this is fire. You say, no, I'm sitting on the voice of God. Roasting someone by your left, roasting another person by your right, and acting as if the fire is not seeing you. Sooner or later, you will need this message. Sooner or later, you will carry destinies. Come, darling. You will carry destinies that are behind you, and you will need to hear God on behalf of them. One day, you will have children, one day, you will have grandchildren. And that day, this spiritual blessing will be tested. One day, you will be a man of God with a crowd of people. Now, all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year. Whether I tell lies or not, you will believe. It's left for me and God. And if I lie, you will punish me. Are you seeing how risky it is? Many of you say, we are praying for you. But you know, you are not even serious about what you are saying. Because you are saying, Apostle, <laughs> the God that called you. How you have been hearing him before. Let him help you. Just make sure you hear well for us. You hear wrongly as a man of God for members and see the way their lives. They will obey you against God. Just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear. It's a grace. Like earphone. God will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating. This is how 2019 will be. Do this. Do that. Do this do that and he said god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and he said people we are ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband Please learn to hear God for your wife and your children. Otherwise, one day God will be saying, move left and you come with your degree and masters and PhD. Nothing wrong. You move left until life changes you in one position, change your wife, change the destiny of your children. Many of us sitting down here, if our parents had God, you shouldn't be at this level. Is that true? There are a number of us who are going to pray. Many of us who are victims of the lack of hearing. Many of our parents were called into ministry. They ran away not hearing. And the blessing that would have come to us, if they obeyed God, it would have been easy. You would have been born again since four years. But their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if God planned four children and you give birth to seven, you will take care of four. He supplies. He supplies. Follow his voice. I know you think I'm laughing. This is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world. 
before kings went for war they would inquire of the lord is it in your bible shall we go and god will say go and give them the strategy we have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you there used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arrangy thing where you do some kind of marriage with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that i have many great men and women of god some my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked and said god bless you but this year I can't claim I hear everything, but my goodness, there are things this ear can hear. We are going to pray, and when it's time to pray, you are going to cry. If it means you laying hands on your ears to say, Lord, I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you. It's very clear that my life is the way it is now. Because I'm not hearing you. Are we together? You need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices calm down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary Janet, shut down my friend you are not hearing god just shut down lord what is the devil trying to do you are going to abuja today next tomorrow you are praying and it's like you saw the map of kano and then it's like you now saw london <clears throat> shut down lord what are you saying please hear what i'm i'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of god consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time it was bishop oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in ghana living faith was blossoming doing very well and they started the church in ghana and there was so much struggle after like four was it five years or six years or so the increase was not there and he was struggling everything he said he went there by himself to preach and still nothing worked and he went back and said god what is the problem and god said i am not there and he said shut it down immediately 
there are some of you from this message tonight you need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life because if you check it you will find out there's nothing wrong if you thought it was god you are a student in the school of the spirit oh i thought this business was god but now i'm hearing this is not god oh. i thought that it was god that said i should start the ministry i remember years ago when my well friends and all of that you know not really close friends who meet me and say apostle with the kind of grace you have start a tv ministry start this i told you about pfn when we had our first crusade pfn was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say start start a church we need you be careful not every good thing is god things don't have to be bad for you to leave them sometimes they can be good they are just not god There was a time I was preparing, taking my bath years ago. I had a meeting. I don't know if it was in Kaduna or one of these places. I had prayed, fasted, prepared a powerful message. As, as I was taking my bath, all of a sudden, my peace, I will come to that, will discuss peace. Peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out. The stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of god works he said he will speak peace peace is a voice peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water peace can tell you man of god this association you are joining is what will destroy you it doesn't mean they are fake it doesn't mean they are not of god but this association is what will bring down your grace man of god be careful That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream. And in your dream you saw a Mecca dying. But in the physical it will never happen. Because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident. And start praying and say, hey, so this is how our apostle will die. <laughs> I, I guarantee you to remain as a dream. You don't know what is covering this man that is standing. It's not pride. Do you know how many times death has tested me? Oh. Make him ma, make him ma, make him Make him ma. Hallelujah. 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 The devil is a liar. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. The glory of the Lord. Lord, let the heavens be open. Command the miracle angels, the angels of deliverance across the land and bread of this building. Everyone who is standing in this place, let him be under the influence of the power. Yeah. Yeah.
I'm going to rebuke Satan and the works of darkness over people and families. Listen, it's time for any devil that is standing your way and that of your family to go. For the enemy has done this. And God has so highly exalted him. Lift your hands as I rebuke the works of darkness. As the power of God comes upon you, let me help them in front. Thou devil of darkness, it's time to go. Let God's people go. 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 Let the power of God fall. Fall. I command demons, powers of darkness, for you cannot stand in the name that is above every other name. Go. Or shall spring them. Outside. That devil, let God's people go. Those outside, lift your hands. The power of God sets men free. Sets men free. Sets men free. Katalaka patototobakata. Randa tabosa. You're going to shout Jesus once. And the power of God, devils will leave. They must go tonight. They must go. Are you ready? Especially outside. The power of God will fall like rain. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Let the angels, the angels of God are moving with a sword in this place. The angels of God are moving with a sword. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken by the fire of the Holy Ghost. 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 No devil can stand. No devil can stand. No devil can stand. I tell you, no devil can stand. Outside, the angel of the Lord is moving with a sword. A mighty angel, a mighty angel, a mighty angel. Outside, a mighty angel, mighty angels, mighty angels, mighty angels. I don't know why angels are moving outside. But the Lord shows me angels, mighty angels, the northern army of the Lord's eye, moving in power.
to your name we magnify your name like fire I see a whole roll outside like fire a whole roll outside like fire is falling like rain like fire Take it, take it, take it. No devil can stand. No devil can stand. This is a place for emancipation. God's people will go free. And no devil, no power in hell will stand the fire power. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity at the back this row at the back for you shall not stand over God's people the fire of God upon one person at the back you will not stand it it comes like rain with power upon you every devil over god's people those of you in front at the count of three I command every devil, go, go, one, two, three, out, 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 by the fire of the Holy Ghost, let them go free, every delay, every habit, every spirit, out of witchcraft, every enchantment, my sister be free now that devil let her go free by the fire power of the Holy Ghost let her go Go, go, be free. That devil for the children shall not suffer the iniquity of the fathers. Bring that devil. Hallelujah. For you cannot stand the light of God. This lady has been tormented. Satan, out of her now. In the name of Jesus, be free. The heavens are open. God's power is touching everybody, not just those in front. Come out of him now. Come out of him. Come out of him. By the power of the Holy Ghost. She is free now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now be free. Come out of her. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Upon you. That fire power. Upon you. That fire power. In the name of Jesus. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Let it rain. Let it rain. Hallelujah. I see a woman. I see a woman who came with a child. A woman who came with a 
I'm seeing a small boy. Where is the woman? Inside or outside? What's wrong with the child? His body is hot. His body is hot. Can you lose him? Can you hold him? If you are deaf, hear me inside and outside. If you are deaf, whether in one ear or both ears, if you brought someone who is deaf, put your hands in the ear that is not working. It's time for deaf people to be healed now. Or even if you are hearing, I see two people. You, you are hearing but it's not clear because it looks like there's water you literally feel like water is going to go now for one of you water will literally come out katapatokopaya deaf ears hear ye the word of the lord Ephata, be opened in the name of jesus in the name of jesus deaf ears make sure you check yourself we'll take some testimonies Bring this lady. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Hallelujah. Please, I need someone with a mic. What is wrong with the child, madam? Just I came back from the work and I had the body of the baby is hot. And I leave him nothing. Nothing. To, you it, believe God will set this boy yes, free right I, now? Yes. Oh, there are miracles. Yes. Listen, there are miracles happening. Now. Once you are under the influence of his presence, God is changing lives, opening doors. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I set you free. The power of God is going through his body. That's what is making him uncomfortable. In the name of Jesus, be free now. Be free now. I command your temperature to go down. Your son is free. Take. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone came, I don't know what it is that has to do with your leg. Is it pain in your joints or something around your leg? There's someone you came, you are not a regular worshiper here. Who is that person? The Lord is showing me someone like that with that case. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Once we call your case, we don't want to keep people so long here. Once we call your case, please run out quickly, please. What's wrong with you? Anytime I walk, it always pains me. Anytime you walk, it always pains you. Where? How long has it been? Since when I was small. Bring a chair for me, please, quickly. What's wrong with you? Pain. It's paining you. Yeah. How about you? Please bring three chairs quickly, quickly. Let's save time. Just turn it. No, no, no. Turn it. God is healing heart conditions now. God is healing heart conditions. Hold on. There's someone, you have abnormal, what do they call it, medical students, help me. Heartbeat, irregular heartbeat. Irregular heartbeat. You? Okay, come. But there's another lady I'm seeing, she's taller than you. Irregular heartbeat. Sometimes it beats, you even have to use your mouth. It's a very serious condition. Who is that? Please come quickly. Lord, we release now the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit.
What's wrong? Come, bring her. All right. Can I see your legs? Don't worry. I'm not saying she pull up. Just, just remove your shoes, can you? God will give you a mirror from here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please watch your screen inside and outside. Watch your screen. Can you see that if you are looking very well, can you see that one of these legs is shorter than the other? Can you see it, please? Now, watch what the power of God will do. Sister, look at me. Open your eyes. Don't miss your miracle. All right? Tell us whether we are pretty. Are you seeing that one leg is shorter than the other? This is why the pain is coming. You will literally watch it grow right now. Are you ready? Watch it. In the name that is above all names. Watch this grow. Are you seeing it? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at, look at, look at what is happening to this leg. In the name of the Lord Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you feel anything? Help her with the mic. What did you feel? Now try walking. Stamp it. Come. Get up and try to stamp it. Try to stamp it. Just stamp it. Try to stamp it. You still feel pains? You still feel pains? It's... No. Are you serious? Come on, celebrate a miracle. Come, come up here. Jump. Can you jump? Look at. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where's the other lady? While the ministers pray for you. This is a simple thing. I'm telling you, don't go around just pulling legs and disgrace yourself. Because that's what a lot of people do. You like, this is not jamboree. You disgrace yourself somewhere, someone injures you for nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God, sir. While they are praying so that we will save time, they'll pray for you. Hallelujah. This is, what's wrong with you? A fracture on your leg. Which of them? How long? Like seven months. Yes, sir. You've been walking with this? Yes, sir. You can't walk except you use it. Yes, sir. Look at me. My brother, I bring you life right now. Amen. I, look at me. Look at me. In the name that is above all names, I command a fractured leg to go. Amen. Let it join right now. See, look at what is happening to him. Look at what is happening to him. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the power of the Holy Ghost going through the leg. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me, sir. Look at me. Can you walk? Look at me. Just start walking. Follow me. Look at this. Look at this. He came with crutches. Jump. Can you jump? Any pain? Fracture. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. Just got healed right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. A fractured leg. You're blind in one eye. What happened to you, sir? There was a friend who knows him. Who came here with him? Oh, you know him. He's a popular person. Is it true that he has been working with this crutch? Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Yahweh. I think we should give God some praise. Yahweh. Pastor Jake just prayed for him. What happened to you, sir? Make sure you don't tell lies, so. Hallelujah. Actually, I, I had an accident. Listen, okay. The leg was paining me. The leg was paining you. Exactly. So, okay. When the man of God, uh, when Pastor Jake prayed for you, it got perfect. It, it became perfect. Yes. Come up, come up, come up. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do. Jump up. Look at this. Look at this. If you're 
your blood group is SS or AS, now is the time for it to change forever. Listen, I'm serious, I'm serious. Please make sure you believe, we are not joking here. Outside, I see that there is a mighty miracle that God will soon do outside. AS. Hallelujah. You can connect for any member of your family. Anyone in this place, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we command AS and SS to change now to AA in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I sense someone has been healed in the ear. Someone has been healed in the ear. Please check. You came here with ear problem. Someone has been healed in the ear. The Lord is showing me someone who has been healed in the ear. Hallelujah. Sorry? My uncle has been treated for the past. Three Your years. uncle? Okay, hold on. I'm a footballer. My uncle has a twist. So every time. Your uncle has twisted. Yeah, How long? Time, three years now. Anytime okay. I'm running, the uncle will be making sound. Just remove your shoe. Let me make contact with it. What's wrong with you, sir? Irregular heartbeat. Eh? Irregular heartbeat. Oh, the irregular heartbeat. Watch it leave you now. It's a devil. Go! By the power of the Holy Ghost. Check yourself. Breathe. In and out. Test yourself. Could you do this before? Breathe in. Could you do this before? Look at this. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. You're free. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please, ushers, hold him. Let me just make contact with your feet. Hallelujah. Or oh, Bishop Stan, just pray with him. He will pray with you. Check yourself. You will be healed. Hallelujah. So we can concentrate. I, I used to have, I play hockey. I'm a sport. Okay, listen to this testimony. I play hockey. I'm a sportsman. And over the years, I've been having this muzzle pool. Muzzle pool, okay. Yes, but outside there, I was feeling something. Outside there, his legs started shaking. And right now, there's no... Right now, he's healed. Power of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pain in the right hand. There's someone, I'm seeing pain here. Very severe pain. You even cry. Who is that person? It's time for you to rejoice. Pain. Severe pain is like a shock in your right hand. Who is that person? Pain. No, no, no. Check yourself, please. Check yourself and if act on it. Come on, watch this. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? Watch a miracle happen. Could you do this before? Stamp it. Stamp it. Pastor Stanley just prayed for him. Hallelujah. The Lord perfect you in the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you are celebrating what God is doing in this place? The hand. The Lord is showing me someone severe pain in your right hand. Please, when we call your case, just run out quickly. You are the one? Good evening. Thank you. Where is the pain in your right hand? How long has it been? It's up to five years now. Up to five years. What's wrong with it? What happened? I don't know. Just like that. Whenever I stretch it, I feel pain. Can you turn it round, up and down? Hold on. Can you do that before? Yes, no. But you, you feel pain. All right, watch what will happen to you right now. You believe that? <laughs> It is such fun to see, such fun to see. Say can lose. Hallelujah. Look at me. I come in a name that is above every other name. And we challenge this devil. It goes. Look at me. I want you to wind it as fast as you can. Go ahead. Don't think about it. Look at this. Hallelujah. Look at me. Sister, what happened to you? Could you do this before? Could you do this before? In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfects you by the power of the Holy Ghost. What's wrong with her? There was a pain here and you, there was a time I wake up in the morning and I found this on my hand. What is this? I don't know. Alright, I'm going to pray for you. Does it pain you? Yes. Does it pain you? Yes. The pain will stop. He is able more than out of her now in the name of Jesus accomplish what concerns me today in the name of Jesus in the name of 
of Jesus. That devil of darkness, be gone. In the name of Jesus. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, bring this lady. Just bring her. For God wants to use you and make a mighty woman of faith. I'm seeing that I don't know what it is that this lady matched but she matched something that is demonic that's what is happening to her Jesus do this for your glory do this for your glory I set you free I set you free I set you free I set you free. I set you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free. I declare you free right now. Shalom. Located your hands. Wow. God will give you a miracle now. I am the Lord that he led thee. I am the Lord your healer. I said the power of the Holy Ghost. who brought a sick person you are a guest please come and line up quickly you brought a sick person you brought a sick person please just pick up God is doing some you brought a sick person now is the time please come out let's save time you brought a sick person outside you brought an invited guest who is sick please come quickly bring them to the front What's wrong with you? Please, technical help us. Pain. Under my stomach, I also feel pains in my chest. Pains. I feel pains. You believe in Jesus Christ. You believe he'll set you free. Listen, sweetheart. What you see here are not stage managed miracles. Are you listening to me? You believe that? Please, can I have a lady? Just lay your hands on her chest, one of the washers. is a demonic oppression you will rise up totally fine come come you're welcome come what's wrong with you madam schizophrenia what schizophrenia mental schizophrenia we, i think we should employ some medical people who is studying you are a serious medical student or you are a doctor eh no we have doctors sir please come quickly quickly appreciate him Please, quick, 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 quick. Please hurry up, sir, and help us. Hallelujah. What is schizophrenia, sir? Schizophrenia is a psychiatric condition. Okay. That is characterized by hallucinations. You hear voices. You begin to see things that don't exist ah oh so it's like madness yes. like a psychosomatic condition you'll be free right now look at me my dear you believe that because 
devils. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. Huh, my dear? Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Can you look at me? Can you shout Jesus? Shout it as loud as you can. Jesus. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That devil of schizophrenia. Go. In the name of Jesus. Who, who brought her? What happens to her? Okay, okay. It's going to leave her. Are you listening to me? It's going to leave her forever. All right? She sees things that are not there. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. And I'm seeing her waking up and shouting in the night. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. In the night, people are sleeping. She just wakes up and starts shouting. Yes, sir. That's what the Lord is showing me. The Lord set you free. Now, sister, look at me. It does not return to you again. And I also see the spirit of depression that has come upon you. The Lord sets you free. Look at me. Look at me. Run down there and run back. Run. I didn't say walk. Run. Run. Run like you're doing 100 meters relay. Do it one more time. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Now run back again. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Totally free. Totally free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sir, just please just spread yourself. Let's do that quickly. You just minister. We have to save time because everybody must be touched this night. Hallelujah. What's wrong with you, sister? There's this a headache I've been having headache. over here now, yes. And it keeps me in presence. Go! In the name of Jesus. Okay. I used to excrete blood. You used to excrete blood. It ends right now. Put your hands on your stomach. That devil of darkness. Be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. I've been having this particular backache. For backache. Five. Lay your hands there. The power of God will hit you so hard. In the name of Jesus. Be totally hope. In the name of Jesus. They pray for you. Hallelujah. That's all. All right, let's have all the sick people come and line up quickly. Sick people quickly. Oh, oh, oh. Heaven. Heaven. You are sick in your body quickly. Oh, oh, oh. Don't go back with your sickness. Those in the congregation be connected. Some of you will be receiving the healing anointing. In the name of Jesus. Go by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus.
inside and outside if you know anybody in your family listen who is not feeling fine or you brought the picture of anybody to connect or anything while we are praying whether it's HIV or cancer I like you to be connecting are you listening the worshipers are they, they are worshiping it's not just for the formality of it they are creating an atmosphere are you listening to me are you listening to me so I want you to connect are you listening to me? I want you to connect to what God is doing. Hallelujah.
didn't see. Is that true? Can you see me now? Can you see me now? Please hold this. Help me with a handkerchief, please. Can you see? Touch this. Touch this. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. That devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfect you. Give God a shout of praise. There is lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sound of many waters, heaven on earth. of i know there are many people just go back to your seat but all of you who came out the five of you all of you come and hold your hands together all of you hold your hands together five of you but i'm going to pray for everybody look at me the power of god will touch you i sense a strong anointing are you listening to me a strong anointing lord let it move across right now in the name of the lord jesus Randa cross to kroto bashigeteba. Randa pros restoration for your family. Great restoration in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Now delay. Any kind of delay. Kataba kataba. No no no. Don't come out. Don't come out. Please just stay where you are. Just lift your hands by faith. Because I see in the realm of the spirit two gates. Bring this lady. Ah. I see a lot of demonic things. Bakatata. Come out of this family now. In the name of Jesus. Every yoke of bondage. Batatata bose. Hey. 
de pronto si la parte que le hemos la parte que le hemos lift your hands everybody projects that are not completed by your family members that devil of delay is a spirit hear me the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran and overtook the chariot at the count of three the power of god as he's hitting you is touching your family members one two three like red oh god like red oh god Every spirit of delay, go, 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 go. I command doors to be open, break through in the name of the spirit. Everyone under the sound of my voice, let the doors of destiny be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you are a student here, yeah, I'd like you to shout amen. amen. You will know why you are shouting amen now. Because the Bible says that when Daniel was tested with his colleagues, that there was a kind of spirit that was upon him. And he was ten times. Suddenly, his, his intelligent creation his, his capacity. Listen, friends, I told you that this is the year you will do fearful exploits in your academics. Listen, and if you are in 100 level, happy are you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold on, leave her. Don't touch her. In the name of the Lord Jesus, look at me, young lady. I'm not speaking to you, I'm speaking to the spirit. Let the power of God bring you forth. Let the power of God bring you forth. You will leave your seat and come forward by the influence of the spirit. Let it happen right now. A contention of light. All those affected will come out by themselves. Leave them. All those affected, they will come out. The Holy Ghost will take you from your seat and bring you here in front. You will come out by the Spirit. Stop that lady. Just stop her. Come. All of them. No, they can't stand. The Holy Ghost will bring you right in front by your, by himself. He will pick you from your seat. No matter how far you are, he will direct you and bring you in front. Leave them. Leave them. They will come by themselves. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. He will bring them to the front. He will bring them to the front by himself. It's a sign and a wonder of the sovereignty of Jesus. Look, ushers, Leave that girl. She will come out by them by herself. If it's the Holy Ghost, He will bring her to the front. You will come out by the Holy Ghost to the front by yourself. It's the compelling power of the Holy Ghost and the castle in the spirit of power. There's one more person. There's one more person. You will come out by the influence of the Holy Ghost. The influence of the Holy Ghost. Sister, you come out by the Holy Ghost. 
you run to the front now by the power of the spirit God will do a thorough work. Listen, I'm telling you, many of you will go back and see doors opening left and right. I prophesy it into your life. I prophesy it into your life. I prophesy it into your life. Sister, come out of her now in the name of Jesus. Be free. Say, you have supernatural expo. I set you free now sister I set you free because she's speaking a language in the realm of the spirit and I hear what she's saying the Lord is setting your family free in the name that is above all names for after the count of five victory will be established that's what the Lord tells me one two Three, four, five. Please call this sister for me. Come, my dear. For God is not only going to set you free tonight, but God has begun a walk in your family. This is Kemi's sister, right? You will go back and see the dramatic things. The Lord is even restoring. I see financial restoration. Mighty financial restoration. There is a property your father wants to sell. Tell him not to sell it. There is a blessing coming. You just go and tell him. Are you listening to me? And for you, look at me. This is an evil spirit. Now, be free. Now. Now. This is an evil spirit. Look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you listening to me? Your family, can me come. Both of you stand. God is bringing a major, major restoration to your family. You believe that? Look at me. I don't know what it is, but the Lord is saying I should tell you that the Lord can bless you anywhere in Nigeria, in UK, or Canada. God just says I should tell you. Are you listening to me? Hold my hands. Lord, let this lady step into a new level of favor. Now, Kemi, for you, look at me. It's a restorative breakthrough God is bringing. What you are entering now, you, would have, you are supposed to have entered it since. But the Lord is restoring to you. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power and the influence of the Spirit. Where's your friend? Where's your friend? The guy that came. Come. at me there are three breakthroughs God is giving you do you understand one I will not talk about it but you know what I'm talking about the second is in the area of your business and that restoration is going to come through wisdom and knowledge are you listening to me wisdom and knowledge but look at me God wants your heart like never before do you understand business books 
can only do so much. Are you listening to me? God must take your heart before he blesses your hand. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Give him an impartation, oh God. Let him know he met the king of kings. Strong impartation. In the name of Jesus. I command freedom for you. I command breakthrough for you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come. You came from a university campus. Not Zaria. Where are you? You came from a university camp. Not Ebi Uzaria. I'm seeing someone from a campus. Not Ebi U. Who is that person? Please. Please come my brother. Come quickly. Come and stand here. My brother, look at me. God is going to cause a hunger for him in your heart. Like never before. This is not the kind of prayer you expected me to pray for you. But you don't worry. Is that true? Sir, what did you expect? To prophesy to my life because I've been experiencing so many. Please, technical help us. So, uh, I've been looking for God's direction in my ministry. Basically, my whole life Look is. Look at going... me, my brother. You, are, you just started ministry or something like that. Okay, you are going into ministry. Yes, sir. You leave ministry and pursue God. You are not equipped. You will die for nothing. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. You just calm down. You need God. You need to experience the power of God. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. So that you don't jump into the error that people are having. However, yes, because you came here, yes, God will ignite a fire in you. Amen. It will first start with the spirit of prayer. Amen. It will fall on you. You will pray like a madman. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. And from there, God will begin to give you direction. Amen. You believe that? Yes, sir. Hold my hands as tight as you can. <laughs> look at me. Just look at me. Lord, as you have shown me, ignite him with a fire. Fire upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. The spirit of prayer, let it fall on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the gentleman? Come. From where? Foot Mina. Mina again. How many of you know that God is doing something in me now? Hold my hands, my brother. You came, you will catch a fire. Look at me, look at me. You came with, an hung with a hunger. God will not leave you. Just lift one hand up. You will feel literal fire coming upon this hand. And it will flow through every part of your body. Lord, let it be done as you are showing me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The name of the Lord Jesus. That strong fire upon you. It flows from your hand from your hand to every part of your body and look at me there is the spirit of leadership upon you you are going back with a strong spirit of leadership are you listening to me i'm hearing the name rebecca sorry we're out of time we'll round up now rebecca rebecca who is rebecca rebecca A student no where are you i'm in secondary school you're in secondary school yes, sir. will you be available if god uses you yes, sir. to bring a great revival in your school yes sir. what school is that jama secondary school jama secondary school hold my hands both of your hands say after me jesus i'm available like Catherine Kuhlman. Let your fire come upon me. Now look at me. Look at, look at the answer to the prayer. You will never be the same again. It's a mighty impartation. You are the same name. Come. You are a student of where? Maybe you. Yes. What department? English language. You believe God can do great things through you? Huh? Yes, sir. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Use me. Use me. Anoint me. Anoint me. All right, now you have the answer to your prayer. In the name of Jesus, ignite her. See, it's like fire in your tummy. 
is that of the spirit you will never recover from it never never in the name of jesus foot me now okay why did you delay we have to hurry up please did you bring your prayer request all right quickly quickly your prayer request outside make sure your prayer request if you are outside please write it quickly and pass it just stay where you are to set free to win souls for the kingdom this and more may the Lord release upon you foot in uh, but you need to dedicate time for God uh, you don't pray you don't spend so much time in the word there's no other way to grow hmm? does it make sense to you what I'm saying but you came because you trust God to put a fire in you. Hold my hands, please. Lord, please put a fire in him. In the name of Jesus. That you will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Your prayer request, please quickly pass them. Just pass it to the last person. We have to be out of here. Just wait because I need to prophesy to the life of everyone. So do that quickly. Outside, even if you are just coming. Wherever you are, please get a paper. Help one another with papers, please. Hallelujah. Please, quick, 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 quick. You should have written this before now, but write it quickly. Please. Because Pastor Jax is going to speak and prophesy the fire of evangelism. Are you listening to me? And Bishop is going to come and pray and prophesy and release the spirit of prayer. These two things. Are you listening to me? We have to do that quickly. The Lord is showing me doors that are opening. This is what I'm seeing. See, I'm seeing this thing again and again. Doors. 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 Many of you don't know the value of an open door. lady close to Jessica. Come. Yes, you. Come. My dear, you standing. You believe God can use you in a mighty way. You want him to use you. Lift your hands where you are. Lord, release an anointing upon her that will cause her to be mightily used. The Lord is showing me visions. I see two eyes being put upon you eyes being put upon you Lord I pray that she will begin to see great and mighty things beginning from today in the name of Jesus my dear God wants you you believe that and he wants you this is not the issue of just run away from all these men that want to run around you they don't even know where they are going focus on Jesus Christ are you listening to me you need him first ladies what you need first in your life is not a man is Jesus if you know how to love and relate with Jesus a man will become an asset to your life are you listening to me hold on we'll soon pray that prayer that special prayer to send away some people out of your life and bring the people God has destined do you like that kind of prayer but you must be willing and obedient sister look at me you want me to pray that God will anoint you you want to pray good friends, an association of people who love God. Love is compulsory, but relationship is not. Are you listening to me? You mustn't relate with everybody. You have a very tender heart. Let them not take you for granted. Hold my hands. 
Jesus, please do something in her life, I pray. Please give her an anointing in the name of Jesus. Bless her. Use her for your glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Steve Strings, please can you come up and sing There is none like you, your guitar. Hallelujah. While you bring the prayer request, Steve Strings will sing There is none like you. I just sense that that's what we need. Do we have the prayer request? Please quickly. Quickly. If, let's, let's have it, please. Pour it here quickly, quickly. All right, there's this. If you've not written, just write. We'll give you one minute quickly. This is not a ritual. God answers prayers, I'm telling you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search to all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There's none like Jesus. There is none like you. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I've been waiting for the Holy Ghost to signify it. Please, everybody, stand up. Jesus is calling many people tonight. Listen to me. Many of you have heard me preach. You've seen the miracles. There are many of you standing outside. And the Lord is speaking to you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. For many of you, you have been running away from God. Or you have been born again, but it's one leg inside, one leg outside. No one condemns you, but Jesus is calling you today. You came with your friend, but I like you. Don't let someone sitting by your left and right make you not to make this decision for jesus christ you need jesus christ he said i am the way there are many ways he said i am the truth hallelujah i'm going to count one to ten i like you to leave your seat and run out at that count of don't be ashamed the lord is talking to you many of you from the time i began to preach you have come to the end of the road as i count as i begin to count one to ten i like you to run and come out one Two, leave your seat and run inside and outside. Three, four, run out. Don't be ashamed of anybody. Five, outside. God is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Run out and come. Ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. Six, leave your seat. Forget about your friend. Forget about whoever you came with. We are waiting for you, seven. The name. Come like to the Jesus. Name Run to Jesus. Jesus. Don't let your brother make you sit back there. He's there is a better life. There is a higher life. There is a greater life in Christ Jesus. Better than what you have experienced in eternity and in this world. No one. Seven. Jesus is still calling. Jesus. Jesus is still calling. No other name. No other name. Eight. Like the name. We have two more counts. Outside. No Jesus is still speaking no to a few people. No Don't be ashamed of anyone. Leave your friend. Leave your relatives. Go on and come here. We are waiting for the last person. We are waiting for the last person. Like the name of Jesus. Ten. Hallelujah. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, I come before you today, calling out to you, please help me, forgive me for my sins, make me a new creature, wash me with your blood, 
make me clean. I receive salvation in the name of Jesus. From today, I receive power to live a holy life in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for your people in the name of Jesus. Blessed Holy Spirit, you see their hearts. I ask that God, you uphold them with the power of your word. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that Lord, everything that has pulled them thus far, Lord, has pulled them far from you. Everything that held them back. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that Lord, you break them away from it in the name of Jesus. Give them strength to walk with you. You are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ and you are forgiven by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please put your, hold on, just put your hands together for them. We welcome you to the greatest, biggest, most victorious family. Not Koinonia, the kingdom of heaven. God's own kingdom. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Jesus brought all of you here. I want you to begin a great and practical work. Are you listening to me? Please. We love you. I want your salvation to be genuine. Don't just make it emotional and then go back. Uh -uh. Are you listening to me? A Christian's life must be backed up by a radical shift. You must leave the things you used to do. There's power. You must break away from ungodly associations. There must be a practical step. That's why the power is upon you. Hallelujah. Now, you do this for me very quick. Very quickly. The ushers are going to have your details. Are you listening to me? Tomorrow, you're going to have a special session with Pastor Jakes. He's going to talk to you. He's going to follow you up. And then we'll get all of you filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And then you'll begin... Every time we get people born again, the moment we follow you up with some foundational teachings, once you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you march straight to prayer band for one month. Hallelujah. You pray for one month. After that time, you'll be strong enough. We want our fruits to abide. Hallelujah. I bless you with the blessings of the Lord. Whatever has held you down, it leaves you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let this be a new life for you. Please get up and follow the ushers. Please celebrate this harvest. Just follow the ushers. Don't worry, you will come back. Follow the ushers quickly. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, please look up. We, we don't have time. Pastor Jakes is going to speak just in a few seconds and release upon us the spirit of soul winning. Are you listening to me? Everyone must become a soul winner. Hallelujah, sir. Hallelujah. Because God is going to be giving some of us a new heart. It starts with your heart, a compassionate heart. If you are willing and ready for this, the Lord will visit you with it. Some of you will literally feel like fire on your feet. That's what I'm sensing right now. A fire will come upon some of you, your feet. Thank you, blessed Lord. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Up your hands. Lift up your hands as we pray. Blessed Father, Abba Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. I ask that God, you release from heaven. You release a fire from heaven, Lord. You release a fire upon your people from heaven. I ask in the name of Jesus, let there be a visitation. Let the presence of God come upon you. Let the fire of God come upon you. A passion for souls. In the name of Jesus, let fresh fire, let fresh fire be released upon your heart. Your heart begins to burn for souls and pants for it. You will not find rest. You will not find rest. In the name of Jesus, your tongue, the fire of God comes upon your tongue. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, the fire of God comes upon your feet. The Holy Spirit will lead you to, to speak the word, to speak the gospel, the angels of salvation. Lord, we pray that you release in the name of Jesus the four corners of this place. Let them be released. Let the oil and the mantle of evangelism be released. We pray. Lord, I pray that you grant your people vision for souls, a hunger for souls, for souls. Jesus! 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 Aprendo siba, rieto mianta, intush limante, risuminta, mionte, itapila, suminante, itrusigrasa, rista minta, sumelete, itrosubala dalabala. Lord, I pray that God, this fire will burn continually, we pray. To burn continually, Lord. We pray in their hearts. Our hearts will be on fire. Hallelujah. That's the spirit of evangelism. That's the spirit of evangelism. Now Bishop is going to pray. I pray this will fall strong on people. The spirit of prayer. Many of you need to pray. Many of you need to pray. Many of you need to pray. Lord, the spirit of grace and supplication rest in the house in the name of Jesus. Lord, the fire of the Holy Spirit and the cold of the Lord rest upon your heart that your heart will yearn for his presence that the Lord will make you successful for your family while I will come to the God and take the person to the God while I will come and deliver the truth and the people of God from the heart and the mouth of the enemy for the Lord find you and love you and intercept you men and women of prayer in the name of Jesus may the authority of God rest upon your heart that you will speak for him you will speak for him you will speak for him you will reach the past in the truth of God in the name of Jesus you trust God the glory of the Lord upon the church from the blood of God and you will be a lead that will bring you right back I'd like you to know it will be answered. Lord, we pray. Stretch your hands and say, Lord, go ahead and let's pray. Lord, do mighty things. Solve problems. Bring impossible miracles. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as we 
make make contact with these requests in the name of the Lord Jesus prophetically wipe the tears of many in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus Rakata prokoto prokoto balaba. Rakata prakata 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 balaba. Rakata prakata 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 balaba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Every prayer point here, let it be met. In the name of Jesus, Lord, release supernatural miracles for the sake of Your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now lift your hands. I want to prophesy. This is the final thing I will go. Please, if you came here, now is the time for you to receive something. Please, don't go back the same. Hallelujah. Listen. See, the apostolic anointing is not just talk. Are you listening to me? The apostolic anointing is an office. Are you, are you listening to me? It's an office. It's not just apostle. This, no, 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 no. It's an office. No man works. The Bible says he gave on to some apostles. It's a position of authority. Are you listening to me? It's an office that is recognized in the spirit. It's, an elect, it's not an issue of prayer and fasting. It's an office. God gives us this office to open up doors for others. It's an election by grace. And if you believe it tonight, you will step into a level of blessing. Lift your hands. Lord, if I be a servant of God, truly called into this apostolic office, my God, confirm this anointing upon me. Once again, I invoke the anointing that was given upon me when Jesus appeared to me. My God and my King, let there be a performance. Ta 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 ya ta. Doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. Doors be open. I challenge thrones. I challenge dominions. I challenge offices. I stand in the anointing of this office. I compel every closed door over your life, over your academics, delay in marriage. I release you. I call your partner to come to you in the name of Jesus. I pray. I pray that the favor of God for he has granted unto me by grace my God and my King. I see it like water flowing from the ground. Let the favor of God sweep. Let it sweep across this congregation. Outside, I prophesy favor. I prophesy favor. I prophesy favor. If you can hear my voice, receive favor. Receive favor. In your academic favor, in your financial favor, in your relationship favor, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy speed upon your life and that of your family members. In the name of Jesus, before the next miracle service, I prophesy, run with the spirit of Elijah supernatural accomplishment exploit by the power of the Holy Ghost exploit 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 hallelujah I pray for every project whether in your life or your family building project capital project businesses in the name of Jesus God of heaven the one who is at work in this place I invoke by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be grace for completion receive it receive it outside receive it outside receive it I pray for your academics in the name that is above all names 
I want to release it upon you. And if you will believe, I release five points in the name of Jesus. I release it. I release it. I release first class in the name of the Lord Jesus. Supernatural intelligence. Every dull mind, I command you be productive, be intelligent. Every course you cannot understand, go back and challenge it now. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray against habit, masturbation, pornography, whatever it is. If it's a habit that is not of God, this moment you have prayed, you have fasted, you have done everything you know to do. But I come under the anointing in this office. I command, be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray all those who are trusting God for life partners and for marriage. Listen, please, if you are not trusting God, you better put your hand. We are not playing here. We are very, very serious. If you are trusting God, for I don't mean people coming around. First and foremost, any guy roaming around your life just to mess up your life, I pray that tonight, God will open your eyes. In the name of Jesus, may God expose destiny destroyers this night. May God connect you with the will of God for your life. I command supernatural marriages for you and your loved ones. In the name of Jesus, I command any kind of terminal disease and I see this, the Lord is showing me ladies, many diseases, infection, whatever it is. I cause it now to its root in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. My God and my King, if your word is true, between now and the next miracle service, if it is the God of heaven we serve, you will receive a call if it is a God if it is God that we serve may you receive a call that will shock you I prophesy it I program your spirit to receive it in the name of Jesus I hear a call it's a call it's a call that's what God told me it's a supernatural call receive it in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you who have been confused about your life, especially men, receive grace to sit down and be established. In the name of Jesus, no more confusion. The reason why you were born, listen to me, the reason why you were born, between now and the next two weeks, everyone here who does not know, you are just roaming around the surface of the earth, escorting men, if God be God, may the reason why you were born be revealed to you in dreams, in visions, by prophetic encounters, by the revelation of the word. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for you. Lift your hands. There are certain anointings that God has put upon this house. Are you listening to me? Number one, the presence of God. I don't idolize this but it's true number two the favor of god the wisdom of god financial prosperity are you listening to me and such as we have my god and my king may it be released upon you now favor wisdom the presence of god the power of god the miraculous i activate the gift of the spirit now all across the building the gift of the spirit receive it gift of healing faith prophecy tongues interpretation of tongues i activate your spirit man visions visions i call for fivefold ministry fivefold offices let the apostolic arise 
Let the prophetic arise. Let the evangelistic arise. Let the pastoral arise. Let teaching graces arise. Ta 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 ta. Ra ba 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 ba. Boko topotia. Upon ladies, strange order of the prophetic. Strange order of the prophetic. Strange order. Strange order. Grace to see. Grace to hear. Grace to move in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. Please listen to me. In closing, all of you hear me inside and outside. Please listen. We're training people to be men and women of character. Are you listening to me? Not just anointing. It's not enough to have power. Those who are students, you must have character. This is the year you will demonstrate the character of the spirit. Be disciplined. Be dedicated. You can't be flying around. Every party cannot be it. Hallelujah. Your Christianity must bear fruit and everyone must witness it. Hallelujah. So as you leave this place, go and call all those people that cause you to walk in unrighteousness and let them know you have begun a new walk with God. I'm telling you, do it. Go and delete every ungodly song in your phone. Break all those CDs and kick it out of your house. You are either a Christian or you are not. Hallelujah. You are either a Christian or you are not. Say I'm a man or a woman of character. Yes. The character of the spirit must be at work in your life. Your conversation. You cannot be speaking as if you are not born again. And then when you come to church, you say, hallelujah, no. You must speak like a Christian. Are you listening to me? Say amen. amen. Inside and outside, say amen. amen. You must speak like a Christian. Hallelujah. You must act like a Christian. Act like Jesus is Lord of your life. Anything cannot be it. Be disciplined. You are a leader. And be humble. Say, I receive grace for humility. If you are an arrogant person in this place, I set you free from that spirit of arrogance. Be humble. Listen. Make sure by love you serve people. Are you listening to me? The greater one in the kingdom. Gone are the days of all these men of God. Ah, protocol for me. Uh -uh. The greater one is the one who can kneel down and serve. Are you listening to me? Take away that wrong mindset of ministry that has been given to people. Oh, you are the woman of God. You are the man of God. Bend down. Let your work speak for you. Let to wash the feet of others. Consider others better than yourself. Are you listening to me? Say I'm a Christian. If you are coming here for the first time, let me prophesy into your life. Please leave your seat and come out inside and outside. Appreciate them very quickly. Please come out here quickly. Come out here quickly. Please clap for them. They are coming. Ushers, lead them to come to the front. You are welcome. Give them a koinonia welcome. We'll soon be out of this place now. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, koinonia. Will you appreciate them? Hallelujah. 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 Please keep coming. We'll pray for you. I want to thank every one of you for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Especially for many of you who came all the way. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. We receive you. Hallelujah. We are happy. We are proud of you. We want to pray for you. That this will be the beginning of unusual hunger for God. That this will be the beginning of passion for the things of the spirit and that this will be the beginning of an unlimited life of breakthrough in the name of Jesus saints of God stretch your hands towards them as we pray we are praying for you may the Lord bless you we pray that God will make you better than you are in the name of Jesus for those of you who have been healed and touched I pray that your miracle will remain in the name of the Lord Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye